Have you ever wondered? You go in a field, it's very, very clean. No weeds, no nothing. Have you ever wondered and how they do it? Hi, I'm the mad farmer from Shpangali district, deep down in the village of Eastern Province. I'm someone who's so passionate about agriculture, be it animal or crop production. Today, I want to look at something that is very, very important again, about weeds. Weeds and production. As long as one thing you need to understand is, as long as your field has got weeds, your production will go down. But today, I thought of discussing a few weed killers and how it's done. I've seen a lot of, especially with the small scale farmers, they are actually, there's too much resistance from adapting, okay, to adapting to new things. You can't do five hectares by hands. Go make the mechanized way. When we talk about mechanized, we're not looking at a tractor, we're not these big things, no. Even cows, even just hiring. Okay, once you do that, you will discover that things will be much easier for you. Instead of you using a hoe when weeding, you use weed killer. There are weed killers like snow banner, the weed killers like colopa, and there are a lot of other weed killers that are on the market. But make sure you check the active ingredients and ask as many questions as you, as you can how it works. But most of the time, it's not advisable to ask those people in these small, small agro shops, unless those big, 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 big agro dealers. Okay, agro dealers, the, the modern bazaars of this world. Because those people, they've got agronomists, agrovets that are going to tell you the truth. They won't be interested in the money, they'll be interested in helping you. So, basically, weed killers differ. There are so many types of weed killers. First of all, there is um, glyphosate. What glyphosate does is it kills anything that is green. It kills, it also follows up to the roots. It kills the weeds. Okay, how is it applied? The best way to apply uh, this, the, the, agro, the, the, the glyphosate is you plant the same day or two days later, you apply your glyphosate, everything is going to be bent. Meantime, your maize is going to survive. There's also whereby you discover that you are late, your maize has already germinated. Okay, what do you do? You get things like snow banner, colopa, these are the things you use. You need, especially when it comes to colopa, you need to be, you need to exercise maximum patience because it takes time. It takes time to start working. But that doesn't mean the weeds will be growing. Okay, it are going to, it's going to pause the weeds, they will stop growing and then slowly they will start dying. Okay, when they die, you find that, uh, especially when it comes to colopa, maybe that's why it's expensive. You find that it, it has also got acetacro in it, whereby once it kills the, the grass, it is also going to go a little bit further and actually hold the seeds to the wizard, they don't germinate until you harvest. That's why you, you find that most of the field that they apply uh, colopa, you find that there are no weeds up to the time they are going to harvest. It's very, very important. I know traditionally, especially as small scale farmers, we always say, no, uh, they destroy the earth and stuff like that. But come on, we need to go the mechanized way. Those are some of the things that actually retard the production of enough maize. Because if there are a lot of weeds in your field, you will discover that... Uh, there the, will be less, uh, le, le, less productions. Again, like, like I said in my previous video, always, always take time to go through your field. Scouting, we call it scouting. Because there are some times whereby there are um, insects, okay, that might kill your, your, your maize, like the armyworms, okay, the, the locusts. Okay, the, what the armyworms will do, they will actually, they will be butterflies. They will come, they lay their eggs here. From there, there will be those caterpillars which will come in, in here and then they will be eating this thing such that they will paralyze this thing. And then if not handled, it can reduce your yield to maybe up to 10%. And then there are also other diseases that are caused by the, the locust, which is the, the maize stripe virus. They call it the maize stripe virus. Although it has got no direct economical effect on your maize, but it's something that you need to know. 
the way it, the way it looks like i'm trying to look for one i saw one there you actually have a maze with white stripes white stripes that is usually caused by by the locust i think i've seen one if my if we may move a little bit closer here i've seen two which can actually explain sorry sorry yes there's this one if you can see there's a big difference here this has been attacked by the virus okay the maze um, uh, the maze stripe virus which is caused by the locust it has attacked this one that's why you've seen there's stunted growth there's also one there there's also one there you can see the difference you see so it's very very important to take time and go through your fields so that if there are things like this you spray when you spray you have a good yield it's very very important to spray one let's do a recap one buy chemicals from the registered company do not buy on the street it's very very dangerous don't gamble don't risk it buy fertilizer from recognized buy seed from uh, registered retailers or agro dealers or hubs because it's very very important once these things are, are you, you, you they give you fake things by the time you are coming to discover your crop would have been damaged thank you so much so if you put any questions please feel free to get in touch with me my numbers 0977851196 thank you so much send me that text message send me that whatsapp message when you send that whatsapp message go straight to the point hi mad farmer i've got this problem don't say hi mad farmer how are you how's the family how no just say that and get straight to the point and then that way we'll be moving together but there are some times where but you want to get in touch with me offline with me that thing we charge because we are consultants at the end of the day we need to make money because we'll be disturbed for us to attend to you we need to stop whatever we are doing so that we attend to you so till next time i think this time the next video we are going to look at how to make nurseries in rain season i know we are getting ready for for the for the coming winter and then we need to start getting prepared so the next topic we are going to do is how to make onion nurseries in rain season thank you so much on behalf of my camera person uh just thank you so much bye bye